What is the scariest thing you have ever experienced? In my old job, I used to cycle home from work along the country backroads just before midnight. There were no streetlights along those roads and I hated cycling on the main road because I was anxious about being in the way of traffic. I had an LED light that was fixed to the front of my bike, though, anyway, I was on my way back home from work one night, and after turning a corner, my light shone on someone who was sitting with their legs crossed in the middle of the road. And hash X200B, the guy was just sitting there in complete silence and darkness by himself. I pulled on the brakes and stopped in front of him and asked if he was alright, he just looked at me and said that he trying to get to a location that was approximately 20 miles or so from where we currently were. I told him that, and he said that he knew and that he was waiting for someone else. Then he got up and walked off into one of the nearby fields without saying anything, and hash X200B, I had another encounter with this same person a week later in the exact same spot. It honestly gave me the freaking creeps, especially when he said that he'd found who he was looking for, turns out the guy was waiting for a specific car to drive that way, the owner of said car was someone he loved but was with someone else, and he was planning to kidnap her. I found this out when I saw his face in one of the local newspapers not long after this incident. He'd been arrested for sexual assault and attempted murder. My wife was stationed in Hawaii when they had the false incoming missile warning. I was not, she called me and we basically said our goodbyes. Then she lost phone service. I thought that was it. She called me back only a few seconds later, but it seemed like an eternity. Sitting in a hospital room with my pregnant wife who was five weeks away from her due date and a nurse came in to tell her she had help syndrome. I'm the corner of the room I google it like an idiot and read that 25% of the time the mother, the child, or both don't survive the pregnancy and the only cure is immediate delivery. It only took like 30 minutes, but the pacing and waiting was fluffing terrifying. A 75% chance of things going well never felt so slim. I got a call from an unsolicited number. I answered and it was a guy saying he was going to come to my dorm room and kill me. He then went into graphic detail about how he would do it, he went on about it for like 5 minutes before I finally hung up, he then called again, and I didn't answer but he left a voicemail. I called the police, and it was a person out in Vegas, they said it was a prank, so many questions still, how did they know my name? How did they know I was in a dorm? I was super on edge for the remainder of that semester. One day me and a friend were playing in the woods, we spent a good 3-4 to four hours there because it was sunny and a day before Christmas Eve I realized I forgot something there the next day. It's now Christmas Eve, and it snowed a whole inch overnight. As I'm walking to the spot where we were, I noticed that someone set up, in a previously trashed area that someone probably camped in, five expensive foldable chairs in a semi-circle with a ladder and a noose in the middle, I bolted out of there because if someone is crazy enough to set that up in the middle of the night when it's snowing on Christmas Eve, then they might have still been there waiting for someone. Probably the aftermath of a grand mal, tonic clonic seizure in which I fractured a vertebra. I woke up on the ground with two strangers over me while I was in the worst pain I had ever experienced and I didn't know where I was or who these people were turned out to be EMTS or why I was in too much pain to move. They kept asking really simple questions and I just didn't know the answers which freaked me out more. It was May and they asked what month it was. I thought really hard and didn't know and I looked outside and thought it looked like August and gave that as my guess. They asked where I was. I didn't know that either, it turned out to be my living room. My girlfriend was also right there, having called the ambulance. They asked me my girlfriend's name. I said I didn't have a girlfriend. This was a very different form of negative emotion, I feel so guilty about that even though there was nothing I could have done about it. I also feel guilty about having had a seizure in front of her because it scared the garbage out of her. I once had my foot cut off in a car accident. The doctor reattached it. Lots of nerve darnage. I fall down occasionally. Most of the time I don't. I worry that at some point in my life it will be amputated. I fear the concept of ruining my body. I'm hearing a car crash right outside my apartment. Afterwards hearing blood-curdling screams of pain from the guy that was injured, that garbage was too real, all the people gathering outside to watch and make sure someone called an ambulance. Having cancer the second time. When I was in high school about 10 years ago I was home alone while my mom went to pick up my brother and before my mom left she told me to bring the dogs in. Now we had two beagles, one that was friendly but barked loud and an older one that we had gotten from the shelter was extremely protective and was not afraid to show his teeth. 
I ignored her and left them outside for a bit, I was in the back part of the house and was on the computer when I heard a noise. I walked to our front room and saw a young guy near the front door who knocked. I stood slightly out of sight and saw him walk near our window and then back to the door and knocked again but also tried the door. Immediately, my blood went cold and I rushed to the back door and quietly yelled for the dogs to come in, they ran in and I herded them to the front room and I heard the mailbox slot open. Right away my older beagle got on the defensive and growled the I'm gonna fluffing bite you growl while the other one barked. I got my phone and called my mom and begged her to come back home which she did with my brother, they looked around and saw no other signs of entry. I triple check every door now and even though those two dogs have passed away, I keep our current dog near me when home alone. I was 21 working the overnight shift at a 24-hour pharmacy when a guy ran in with a ski mask and gun and robbed the store, he made me get on the ground and took my co-worker to all the registers and empty them into bag, then ran out and jumped into a getaway car and drove off, still had to finish my shift after that, too, he and his accomplices were arrested a couple weeks later and he did six years in prison for armed robbery. I got a notification in the mail from the state when he was released, gee, thanks. Amphetamine induced psychosis. I spent a period of time addicted to crystal meth, and the psychosis one goes through after having not slept for days at a time is scary. You see, shadow people, you believe everyone is out to get you. Every conversation out of your earshot is about you, your delusions become very real, at one point I though there were leprechauns that were out to kill me. I saw the leprechauns. I heard them whispering and plotting against me. It's insane. I'm so glad that's in the past. Growing up I had a bad relationship with my three older sisters, but particularly the one closest in age to me. There isn't one moment in particular but a series of them, when my parents would go off on dates there were too many times where my sister ended up chasing me with a knife and she wasn't just playing around. She meant real harm, we would spend 15 minutes on opposite sides of the table running around it, trying to prevent my sister getting close enough to stab me, all the while trying to get to the phone so I could call my parents. Then try to get to the bathroom because it was the only room with a lock on the door, she would then sometimes threaten to come into my room and kill me in my sleep. I would pile laundry baskets and dishes near my door when I went to bed at night so the noise would wake me if she tried to get in. My sister would get in trouble sometimes but usually it was chalked up to normal sibling rivalry, and I was gaslighted by my parents into thinking it was normal, edit, I am a girl, yes I am out of there and okay now. I have cut all ties with my sister and am happy and safe now. Used to be when my travel partners abandoned me and I had to walk 3 kilometers through a foreign city alone at night. But today I had a biopsy done and will find out on Monday if I have cancer, so I would say I'm currently experiencing the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. Got caught in a riptide 200 yards of shore with all of my family, including my at the time 6-year-old little sister, we all made it out fine except my dad, he was so exhausted from carrying my sister that he was barely able to stay afloat, they had to send a rescue crew to get him. We all made it out alive, thank God. I was bitten by a King Brown on a remote mine site, full envenomation greater than hospital greater than antivenin etc. The side effects from the antivenin were worse than the snake bite. I've actually never told this story before but when I was about 7 I was lured into a shed by a person who had in the past sexually assaulted me. I guess they were afraid I was going to tell so they tied my long shirt sleeves behind my back and slowly covered my nose and mouth with duct tape and left me laying there. It was like falling down a long tunnel. I had left my mouth open slightly so I started pushing with my tongue to break the seal around my mouth as I worked my hands free. I managed to get out and I was so scared I never told anyone. It's honestly the only time I remember fearing for my life. I pour steel in a foundry I've had a mold blow up on my legs causing third degree burns down my legs, still dealing with aftercare now about it, edit thank you for the silver my first ever. At about this time last year, I found myself standing on top of a bridge, ready to jump, looking back now, I was terrified of the constant barrage of intrusive voices in my head, and of the person I had become because of these horrendous, uncontrollable thoughts, but at the moment I just felt as if there was nothing left for me, after having a moment of clarity standing there, I broke down and, for the first time, realized how afraid I was of myself and my thoughts. I know to the average person this is not as scary as most of the other stories here, but I have been held at gunpoint, almost drowned, among other things, and, for me, this was 100 times scarier than anything else. My first car accident. I didn't see the car and t-boned them. 
There was a little boy in the car, and I freaked out inside solely because of that fact, no one was hurt, but between being responsible for what could have been the cause of someone else's injury or death and the fact that I knew my dad was going to freak out when he heard, and just like the accident itself, it was one of the most terrifying days of my life.